Hi, my name is John Faulkner. I'm an Epic consultant and your Epic career coach. I can help you if you're trying to get into Epic or become an Epic analyst or consultant. And you can follow me for quick tips on how to do these things. So the first topic I'm gonna to cover is how do you get an Epic job? First of all, you do not need to have healthcare experience. Um, I used to be a substitute teacher, so if I can do it, many of you can too. Uh, the main ways that people get in right here is number one, at the elbow support, and these are not in a specific order. So at the elbow support, and what this means is you're typically on like a two week contract with a consulting firm, or it could be up to four weeks and you're supporting an Epic implementation at Go Live. Another way, this is how I got into Epic, was as a credential trainer for the ASAP module, which is emergency. So that's how I started. Um, and then also you can get in as a principal trainer uh, this is basically a, called a PT or an instructional designer. That's an ID. And these are leaders, uh, team, basically team leads for the credential trainers for those EPIC modules. And they usually have a principal trainer that's covering one EPIC module or covering multiple modules at the same time. And they do a lot of curriculum design. They do lesson plans, tip sheets, videos, training, that sort of thing. Um, and that's the same for the credential trainer. They do a lot of training, one-on-one -on -one trainings. They go out, do site visits, and that sort of thing. An analyst, um, they're more behind the scenes most of the time. That's what I'm doing today. Um, and I've been doing that for several years. So you are usually an Epic certified builder. Um, today, I also have heard like accreditation, uh, get a proficiency. All these roles, you can work in like a build capacity. And what you're doing is you're basically taking the Epic Foundation build, and, which is basically out of the box from Epic when you buy it, and then you configure it for, the other, for your hospital that you're working at. You customize it, and then you collect enhancements, release notes, and then you update it um, as you're working on the system. As far as like where the people are coming from, so like outside of healthcare, no experience, that's where I came from. This was absolutely me. Um, outside of healthcare, and you may have some IT experience. Maybe you work for like a small company, a small business. You have IT experience in some capacity. Um, you could be also just working in the hospital already or another health system. And then maybe you use like a non-EPIC electronic health record system or EHR. So that could be like Cerner or another one out there. Um, I've also seen um, more private companies get into EPIC. So like CVS, Walmart, um, IT departments. Um, supporting in other roles as well. So those are some other areas. Um, also, if you're lucky enough, you can get right out of college and get a job. Um, so maybe some, sometimes maybe folks intern in an IT department, you hear about a job because you got the opportunity to build a little bit in Epic. This is how, kind of how you can get your foot in the door as well. The key to kind of like making movement forward is thinking about the skills that you already have or could have to get your foot in the door. And then you just think about like, you know, what can I do with my skills that I have today? To kind of add some context to this, I'm just gonna talk about like, how did I get in? So I, I was kind of a fluke to be honest. I was just in the right place at the right time. I received a phone call one hour before I was married from a recruiter. And they needed trainers for a go live at a hospital near me and ran short of people who already had Epic knowledge. I was a substitute teacher. I was not, um, and no EHR experience. I didn't even know what an EHR was when I started. So what I did, I took the opportunity. It was $20 an hour. It was the Epic ASAP module. I didn't really know a module at the time. It was a six month contract. And then after that, that's how I kicked off my career in Epic. And then from that, I ended up about three months in, I actually get a, was able to get a full-time credential trainer job at a hospital with benefits and everything. So that was great. The skills I had tr that transitioned into this trainer role, um, communication, teaching, training, uh, technical aptitude, Presentation skills, you obviously need that when you're in front of people, you're training folks, you're, whether you're an analyst or a credential trainer, and then problem solving. And like I said a couple times before, I didn't have any medical training. I had no medical term, any terminology knowledge. 
I had no EHR experience and I didn't have any healthcare experience whatsoever. I was literally a teacher. So that's how I got into it. And how, what does this really mean for you? Right? Cause that's why you're watching this video. You need to think about like what you can bring to the table. Do you have some of these skills? Do you have none of these skills? That's okay. But the important thing is, you know, now what you need to work on and then also check out job postings for skills that hospitals are looking for. So some of the skills they're looking for is like analytical project management, change management, leadership roles, technical service, uh, certificates and or education and when you're looking for jobs you can search by epic credentialed trainer you can just say like epic ATE support you can put in epic analyst um, I'm trying to think what else you can do like you know, if you're a project manager, Epic project manager, that's like another one you can do.